Aloha and welcome to another all new, actually this might be the first, semi-first, didn't have a name for it when I first did it, edition of He's So Vainy! I'm your host Jeremy Vainy and I don't have any sort of intro for this yet. So if uh, one of you creative monkeys out there want to come up with that for me, thanks. <laughs> I won't pay you. Might say some nice things about you. Um, so let's start off the very first, or arguably second, it's the second episode of He's So Vainy, a show about consciousness and stuff. It's basically a reaction show. It's basically, I'm getting cantankerous in my old age and I wanna watch some clips on the old, uh, you know, internets here and, uh, and react to them. Having to do with consciousness, paranormal, ufological, anything in that stratosphere and um, w how I am qualified to talk about any of these things, maybe as they come up uh, per episode, I will uh, say it. <laughs> um, maybe even starting with this episode, who knows? Sure, why not? Um, but first, on this inaugural second episode of a thing I just made up, um, how about a retraction, folks? That's right, we're not afraid to make retractions. When I'm wrong, I admit it. So on the last episode, which was really the first episode, which, you know, again, I'm making this up. Uh, <laughs> I talked about David Grush and Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. Uh, Corbell and Knapp were being interviewed by Joe Rogan. And um, I was basically saying the Grush thing doesn't make sense. And it doesn't, the core thing about the David Grush the core issue with David Grush talking about disclosure, uh, non-human intelligence and biologics and all of this is that he's allowed to say, he's, go, he's allowed to go on television or the internet and say exactly the contents of these programs basically without saying, I don't want to say they're alien, they're non-human intelligence, okay. But you're saying they're aliens, that they have crashed here and that we have retrieved them. Uh, various permutations of that story and that we're reverse engineering their technology. So you're allowed to say all of that as a quote unquote whistleblower, but you're not allowed to give the program titles. <laughs> like as long as you don't say what the programs are, you can say the contents of the top secret programs. You can say the top secret stuff, just not the title of the top secret program. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. So uh, that core, problem persists. However, the thing that I'm retracting um, is that in the video, I had said that the only uh, urgent, incredible claim that was being, um, I guess, discussed in that way as urgent and credible by the ICIG um, was his claim of retribution for we don't know what. I mean, for allegedly whistleblowing or wanting to talk about this in the first place. And um, a couple of people had told me I was wrong on Twitter. And this is actually what made me want to do this as a show. Like, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do this more than one or two, just kind of fun things. But actually, the response, including the people who um, are against what I have to say, were really civil, <laughs> which I don't find on UFO Twitter too much or in the YouTube comment section anywhere. So everyone was really nice, uh, even the people correcting me. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, if we can have civil discourse about this stuff while I make fun of it and be sarcastic, then great. Uh, all is well. So what they pointed me to was a letter from, uh, I guess this would be Compass Rose, which is, uh, was at some point Grush's law firm or attorneys, you know, they were his, his lawyers. And what they say in this little paper here is the ICIG found Mr. Grush's assertion that information was inappropriately concealed from Congress to be urgent and credible in response to the filed disclosure. Uh, Compass Rose brought this matter to the ICIG's attention through lawful channels and successfully defended Mr. Grush against retaliation. Okay, so they're saying that it's not just the retaliation stuff, but whatever the information is. Of course, unfortunately, they don't say what the information is. So what is the 
assertion, not even that it is, but just the assertion that information is inappropriately concealed from Congress. If that's urgent and whatever, uh, credible, what is it? Well, I guess we, we can't know that. By the way, if you're wondering what the ICIG is, um, let me read you. It's the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, which conducts independent and objective audits, investigations, inspections and reviews to promote economy, efficiency, effectiveness, and integration across the intelligence community. I don't see anything about aliens there. So uh, essentially what the Inspector General of the intelligence community's job is, is to make sure everything's running smoothly. <laughs> to promote economy and efficiency and effectiveness and integration. You know, these are very vague general terms here, right? But um, uh, th that means that the information he gave them could just have to do with like, again, you know, government waste or uh, programs, like they said, that Congress doesn't know about. But that doesn't mean aliens. And it got me to thinking, you know, could there be, no one said this, but I'm just gonna throw it out there as possibility. Could there be disgruntled workers who go to David Grush? And they know that this stuff is being kept from Congress. And maybe they're like, oh, we got to get them to investigate this. We got to get them to care. I know. Let's say it's aliens. That'll get everyone looking. And then it'll end up being some other, like, you know, normal, wasteful, hidden program that Congress doesn't know about. Um, just the alien part is wrong on purpose. Like, I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's a possibility. Anyway, uh, my apologies there. It was said in two contexts, and I'm not certain why I thought it was only the urgent and credible bit only applied to uh, the retaliation thing. I think that's because, because I remember hearing it a bunch of times, so I suspect it's because that's what was being said originally, and then this, this thing came out this, later, and then it became about two things, right? So I don't know. Um, in any event, I was wrong. What are you gonna do? I'm still right that the whole thing stinks because again, he's talking about all the contents of top secret programs and no repercussions there because they're not true. You can, talk, you can lie about the Pentagon and their programs. Um, you can be cleared to do that as he was cleared to speak about this stuff, but he's not allowed to say what the programs are according to him. Uh, and wouldn't it be interesting if, the, again, the programs themselves are real, it's just what he's saying about them is false, and you know, whether he knows it or not. All right, so this brings me to the mailbag. Letters, we get, okay, it's not letters, it's not even mail. It's really just a comment on the YouTube thread that I wanna address. This is from Kbird529. And I just want you to know, K-Bird, um, I read this. It's everything I despise. <laughs> and I was going to roast you as comedically as possible uh, for this. But then I thought, like, mm, I shouldn't because you're not prepared for that with this. Like, I didn't sit... Like, you know, you don't write to me, like obviously in the end here, you mean this to be something nice or, or obviously like you listen to Peritopia and all that. You, you follow my work in some fashion. And so do you deserve to be lampooned? <laughs> uh, if you don't know it's coming, probably not. So I'm not gonna do that, um, just a little. <laughs> so, but in the future, everyone know that if you write to me, uh, you're liable to get like a cantankerous, he's so veiny kind of response. That's just, uh, you know, how it goes if, if it doesn't sit well with me. Um, so K-Bird says, we all create our own reality. Alien abductions, kundalini experiences, or anything else. See how I'm handling this? I'm handling this calmly. I'll just say that, um, you know, if you're creating reality, leave a little for the rest of us. You know, because things aren't going so well out here. Uh, should we believe you or Whitley's experiences? It's probably not the inflection. It should probably be more like, 
Should we believe you or Whitley's experiences? He's talking about Whitley Strieber. Um, I'm somewhat surprised your opinion of Grush's testimony. Can I presume you think uh, this is just a conspiracy and just to appease the public? I've been interested in the UFO topic for many years and an avid listener of Paratopia and many other podcasts. You seem to be somewhat critical of other people's experiences. I don't believe or disbelieve, but find the topic slash phenomenon interesting. Anyway, thanks for your opinions and views on this, or your opinion and view on this. Probably give you a lot of opinions and views on this. Well, first things first. Um, so what's funny about this is I just did, um, I just recorded this week a radio show slash podcast called Where Did the Road Go? And... Um, I got into a little bit of a spirited debate with, I don't know if he's a co-host or um, a guest, guest co-host. I don't know what you would, because I know Soraya Asgath, his last name I always forget, um, is the host. And then I think he brings on other people every now and then, friends, to like sort of co-host. Anyway, got into a little spirited debate about spirit stuff. Um, and then I, the next day, recorded an hour on doing radio episode, which is my podcast, about a couple of the aspects of that conversation. And in that, I said, I know that, that I'm going to, like, when this, so the show goes to the radio first, and then, like, a week later, it goes on YouTube and wherever else as a you know, podcast, video cast. And I know, like I know anything, that there are going to be people in the audience who say, um, oh, let me, quote, let me quote them here because you say it. Uh, you seem to be somewhat critical of other people's experiences. Well, that's putting it kindly, because usually what I get and what I know I will get from this is you don't believe anyone else's experiences except your own. So, <laughs> which is ridiculous. But let's get to, uh, so I said that in my episode. I said that in the Our Undoing Radio episode, which will be released in a few weeks. So the fact that you're coming in with this right now... <laughs> is kind of like perfect timing. It's hilarious. Um, so let's back up here. First of all, we create our own reality, alien abductions, Kundalini experiences, or anything else. I'll be as kind as I can and just say that is false. And, um, you know, should we believe me? Should you believe me or Whitley Strieber's experiences? Like, basically, you're saying, why don't you believe David Grush? You guys say you and Whitley Strieber... And others also say very similar wacky things, right? Like, why should we believe you and not them? And the answer is, maybe you shouldn't. But, you know, you have to have discernment in life, right? I mean, you can't, we, I mean, apparently not. If your first sentence is that we create our own reality in all of this, um, and you're involved in this field, the odds are, if you add these things up, you aren't a fan of discernment because... You consider that to be judgment, and you don't like being judged, and so everyone is valid. And that just isn't how life works. I'm sorry. So you can take me or leave me, take Whitley or leave him, um, based on that, that sort of intangible trust factor, I suppose, of whether you trust. I'll stick with me. Trust me or not. But I think as you're navigating that, or anyone out there navigating this, like, who do you believe? The thing that you can't believe is someone who, for instance, brings forward evidence that turns out to be false, whether it's hoaxed or it's just a complete misidentification of, say, a light in the sky that turns out to be birds with light reflecting off them or an airplane or satellites or whatever. If someone keeps bringing this forward and claims to be an experiencer and it is easily debunkable, then they're not an experiencer is kind of how I would take that, right? Like, um, so if you're bringing forward something that can be factually explained away as evidence of your experiences, uh, that is a problem. That, you know, and as far as David Grush goes, I mean, essentially, he's just bringing forward a middleman testimony, right? Like, hey, I didn't really see any of this stuff. Maybe some saw some, was shown some documents or something. But hey, I didn't really see any of this stuff. I'm just telling you what other people told me, which is neither here nor there. Um, but the fact, again, that he's allowed to say all of this publicly, but not allowed to say the names of the programs, 
just use your own little sniff factor here. Does that add up to you? That you, I mean, if you think about like a nuclear program, could I tell you, could I give away the schematics to, as a scientist, to our latest uh, nuclear weapons that nobody on earth knows about or has, um, but just not tell you what the name of the nuclear weapon program is? Does that make sense to you in any way? That I would be cleared by the Department of Defense to do that? But if I say the name, they're gonna come after me. If I say the name of the program, I mean, no, that's ludicrous. And that's exactly what this is that's going on here. So in terms of what do I think he's up to, uh, can I presume you think this is just a conspiracy and to appease the public? Um, no, you can't presume that. I don't know what it is. I don't have to know what it is to know that what's being presented is wrong or bunk. Um, however, if you want like my Jer's personal theory that I am open to being wrong about, it's that, you know, someone in the DOD saw what happened with QAnon, um, you know, and decided like, hey, wow, it's really easy to just control people with the internet, huh? How do we get in on that? <laughs> How do we monetize that? How do we have a perpetual invisible enemy called non-human intelligence or whatever, you know, that we can get perpetual funding for? I really think that's at the core of it. Um, from the military aspect and then from the politicians aspect, I think a lot of them are crazy, you know? So it, it plays. As far as David Grush and company go, you know, what their role in that is, um, I think differs person to person and I don't really know because I don't know these people, so. But I, I guess I just think like the overarching thing that I believe is probably going on is trying to replace war on terror with war on non-existent fictional invisible aliens where you don't have to actually even go into a country to go to war with people, with other nations. You can just instill this fear and get funding to study it. And that's, you know, to me, that's the path of least resistance theory. Um, and the reason that I ultimately don't believe anything like this could happen is because I am an experiencer and it doesn't go this way. I mean, that's just it. This experience or these types of experiences, I know that especially people who've come into this since 2017 have all been inducted into this, you know, mainstream militarization, disclosure, you know, de pseudo debate over what does the government know and it's aliens and handshake deals and blah. Um, but that, you know, if you pull back and actually listen to experience or testimony, that's, to the extent that that exists, it's a facade and it doesn't really exist. Like it's a bigger, broader, much more personal topic. So there's that. Um, the thing that bothers me the most about your thing here, I'll just tell you, is that you said you're an avid listener of Peritopia. Um, so if you're an avid listener of Peritopia, then you should know how I would respond to this stuff. You should know how I feel about we create our own reality, <laughs> right? Like, like, are you avid or is it just on in the background? I guess would be my question because you should know already how I feel about this stuff and why. And so the idea of um, that I'm somewhat critical of other people's experiences, um, only the crappy ones, you know, like, no, not everyone is real. Yeah, again, you have to have discernment. And in terms of the spiritual stuff that I'll be talking about, in terms of consciousness per se and human wholeness and all that, again, you can't know that my experiences, because I speak mainly from experience and from wisdom, let's put that in quotes, um, and you can't know that that's true, right? Like, you can trust me, but I could be lying to you. I could be delusional. These are the options, folks. So I would just say that in trying to discern what is true and false is what I'm going to tell you about things in the future about Kundalini or is life a simulation or whatever it is, you know, whatever we're going to get into here with the reaction videos, um, is, what I'm going, is what I'm telling you 
Does it transcend and include what's being said here um, as the option or not? Because if it doesn't, then I've got nothing, then I'm just wrong. You know, I've got nothing to be critical about or to point out. Um, I'm pointing things out. I'm doing it in this jokey, critical way. But I, I am trying to point out some things that um, when it comes to the spiritual stuff that I know, that I know from direct experience, and when it comes to the alien abduction and paranormal stuff, it's things that I may know, and it's things that I may be, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to differentiate them so that you, we're all on the same page with what I know and what I'm like surmising and giving an educated guess about. But yeah, some things are going to be just like, well, for instance, with David Grush, I don't know what the truth is. I know what the truth is not. And the truth is not what we're being told here. For the reasons I just explained, it doesn't make sense. So there are certain things like that. And like aliens, you know, aliens isn't a thing. There's no such thing as aliens. There is the phenomena. It is real. It can present as alien. You can think it's aliens and all of that. But if you, on the one hand, think about what's going on and how it doesn't actually reflect that narrative. But also, uh, I've made this point elsewhere and I will continue to make it. The term alien is a Western separate self construct, right? Like anyone who is in actual balance within themselves, which is mainly not us, uh, would be, you know, maybe First Nations cultures, the ones who stuck with their roots. Um, or who never left their roots. Uh, those are people who might, you, know, you could say, come from heart or something like that, who don't have that differentiated self-sense in the way that we do, where, you know, ego first. Um, they're still in their interconnectivity, and it's not a big revelation when they experience it. They don't think they're enlightened, because they're always in that state. Uh, so... Alien would never come to them as a word to say because there's no such thing as an other like that, right? Um, so if that is the natural state of things, this interconnectivity, this web of life, uh, sort of what people call Gaia consciousness, probably too often, I don't know. Um, do you think that advanced beings... What does that word advancement mean? I mean, do you really think that that means that they're like divorced from uh, nature, they see subject to object, they have better technology, blah, blah, blah. They just happen to mirror our broken, divorced from interconnectivity self-sense. They happen to mirror that, our, our, the way that we project a future and advancement and think about that. They just happen to mirror that. Right? No, they don't just happen. <laughs> it's just not, it, like, we're unhealthy, right? And so we see things through a cancerous lens. And then we expect them to be cancer too. And we go, ah, are they a friend or a foe? Ugh. Are they our enemy? Should we shoot them down? Or should we welcome them as, you know, cosmic NAFTA? <laughs> Do treaties with them. It's like, it's so ridiculous. But that's because we think we're adults. We think we're the adults in the room, and we're not. We're actually in our terrible twos, throwing a tantrum and destroying the world. So there's that. Um, I guess just lastly on this, when it comes to discernment, again, I, I, so many people in ufology and in paranormal research and in the New Age especially refuse to have discernment because they are afraid of judgments, they're afraid of being judged, they want to be validated constantly. And if you need that, then probably your experiences aren't true. They probably are a delusion. If that's what you need in life, to constantly be told, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, my experiences are real, oh my god, this is happening, uh, you're probably playing Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, that's just the way that works. So, um, I don't know what to tell you there. It's not wrong to make judgments and have discernment. However, I do recognize that a lot of us are also feel, or at least used to, feel broken by the fact that you would speak up and talk about your high strangers experiences 
and either be laughed at or w look at the pseudoscientist on TV, the science writer or whatever, you know, the, the skeptic. Um, or the real scientist, who knows? Maybe they're, but usually it's like these science writer people who are like the, de the debunkers. Although now I guess Niels deGrasse Tyson probably counts, who knows? In any event, someone in official dumb in a suit and tie who comes on and tells you you're wrong, you know? They come down from on high, and then everyone's supposed to like laugh at you and say tinfoil hat and eh. Yeah, I mean, I get that, that like that can make you gun shy to want to have discernment and call out other people's stuff when that makes you feel bad being called out wrongly by people trying to protect their own sense of reality. It's just, you, you toughen up, everyone. <laughs> like, that's, that's all it is. Just toughen up because, you know, both can be true. Those people who are laughing at you and saying tinfoil hat, her, 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 um, they can be right about a lot of things, but they can be completely wrong about you and your experiences and, um, and not know it. And that's fine. I mean, again, if it's, if it's real, how are you offended? There's no point in protecting an image about you, you know? Um, or I guess to put it simply, like if you want to get to the truth, how can you just accept every false thing as also true? Because if everything's true, there is no such thing as true, right? Um, there is the signal, there is the noise. You got to cut out the noise for the signal. Debunkers don't believe in a signal. And so you even have to have discernment there to know like who who is actually trying to parse out the signal from the noise? I mean, I'm sure there are certain debunkers who would say that they, oh yeah, yeah, I care, you know. I mean, I just interviewed Mick West for uh, Dreamland, and he says that he uh, would love it if there were aliens or life after death. He would love to know these things, and I kind of take him at his word. I think he gets crapped on more than he deserves as a debunker, but because he's a debunker, it's like, well, then don't put yourself in that category, man. <laughs> Stop hanging out with those people. You know, like, uh, because a lot of them, especially the old school, quote unquote, skeptics, were just there to run cover for uh, essentially materialism because they're humanists, and, which means humans are the center of everything and materialism is the case, even though their very science tells them this isn't true, but that's kind of what they promote. Um, all right, that was, that was a lot. Do I even have time for a, an actual show? Let me look here. No, I do not. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I'm going to record a bunch of these and then start posting them weekly. Sundays feels good, right? Um, but if you, want to, uh, if you want me to react to anything, videos, whatever, or you want me to read your emails and dress you down, or thank you, I don't know what. I'm not always going to be cantankerous, I promise. Write to me, jeremy at ourundoing.com, or leave your suggestions in the comment section here, and do whatever it is that the Pavlovian thing is. Ring a bell, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Um, tell a friend, I'm, uh, you know, you, you got this crazy guy doing reaction videos to consciousness, UFOs, paranormal, and whatever. Um, let's make it a big thing. Why? because that would be hilarious. It would be hilarious if reaction videos were the biggest thing that I end up ever doing, uh, to me personally. And I know that everything that you do is to, to make me feel good about <laughs> me. I need validation too. All right, I will uh, see you probably next Sunday. Bye.